every artist can create a sort of species of facial uh, kind of recognition of who that artist is based on the way they paint the figure or the face. When he appeared in the studio, it was really like I had been hanging around in, on summer vacation and I brought some canvases with me to paint. And I was thinking, you know, oh, you know, I'm not really doing any painting here. I'm just hanging around. Everybody's going to the beach. I don't like going to the beach. And uh, I don't know what to do. So one night I had, you know, a nice dinner and a great bottle of wine. And I went into my atelier and I painted this painting. And then I just went to bed and I didn't really look at it. And when I woke up in the morning, he was just there on the easel, like he had just appeared and showed up in the room on his own. And in a way, that's why I called him an, an antipodal being, because he appeared as a sort of independent of my will. He would just forced his existence into my life. When I was about 22, 23, I said, what do I really love? What do I really like the most? And I realized I love Rembrandt, I love Velazquez, I love Goya, I love the European painters. In vielen seiner Bilder wird man erkennen, dass er auf das Vokabular großer Meister der Kunstgeschichte von Matisse, Munk und Picasso zurückgegriffen hat. Man wird aber nie ein kopiertes Motiv konkret auf den Maler zurückführen können. I don't want to take their work and make it look like mine. I'm more interested in my work looking like theirs. The crucifixion paintings were sort of coming back from my childhood memories. We were having a very sort of informal, not terribly strict, sort of Catholic upbringing. <laughs> You'll see these paintings of orgies and uh, characters like the couple on a striped couch and this and that. These paintings have more of a social reference than simply just the idea of painting naked figures. <laughs> Die Ausstellung selber ist das Ende einer Tournee, die ihren Anfang in New York genommen hat, über Rotterdam, London und jetzt schließlich in Frankfurt angelangt ist. Ich finde diese Station mit Abstand die allerschönste. Ich finde, dass der Direktor der Schönkunsthalle Max Hollein ihm freie Hand gegeben hat, um wirklich seine Visionen zu machen, wie man seine Kunst darstellt. I started to hear a little bit about the wild painting happening in Germany. And at right around that time, this now was around 82 or so, I'd met Docopil in New York and he said, oh, you should really come to Cologne because there's such a scene there and your anti-classicist concept about painting would, would be really understood. Whereas in New York, they didn't quite understand that idea. So when I got there, immediately I met, you know, Walter Dahn and 
Doku Peel, Rosemary Trockel, Andreas Schulz. Ich kriege morgens einen Anruf aus London vom Flughafen und sage, höre, hier ist George Condo, ich bin in einer Stunde da. Ich sage, ja, komm mal rüber, ne? ist in Ordnung. Und dann hat er sofort ein Atelier gehabt und wir haben sofort geredet, Kaffee getrunken. Ich habe ihm die Stadt ein bisschen gezeigt und, und war sofort integriert. And I could see that this community of, of artists kind of working in this really high energy way that was so inspirational to me, much more inspirational than the way the New York sort of attitude was, was everybody wanting to put the other guy down. And the minute somebody got successful, they would smash you down and say, you know, listen, this is all about money. It's all about the market. It's nothing to do with creative thought process. And in Europe, I found that the artists were really in touch with what they're doing as artists. Man muss sich vorstellen, so amerikanischer Junge von 27 oder so, kommt in Köln, äh, Weiber fast nacht auf die Straße und da gehen so Hausfrauen mit grünen Haaren oder langen roten Nasen. When I got there, the bus driver and the tram driver had this crazy mask on and there was only two people on the train because it was about six in the morning and each one of them had a mask and I had no idea what was going on. And it was later when everybody kind of woke up at about 8.39, they said, oh, today is the beginning of Carnival, it's a big deal. So, <laughs> so that was already an inspiration. Und ich glaube, dass das in manchen Bildern immer noch zu finden ist. Künstler, der so ein breites Verständnis von Kultur hat, also ein breites Verständnis hat von dem, was Kultur in unserer Gesellschaft bedeutet, über Musik, Literatur, der das schafft, wirklich zusammenzufassen und wirklich so eine, in seine eigene Bildsprache zu bringen. Und das, äh, das zeigte sich schon 83, aber dass es wirklich zu solchen wahnsinnigen Bildfindungen kommen würde, das äh, das ist eine Frage von Intelligenz, von Können und Entwicklung hier. Das Bild, was ich gekauft habe als erstes, ein Bild, das hängt hier nicht. Das war äh, ein Tisch mit einer roten Kugel, mit einer roten Form. Diese runde Form, die taucht ganz oft auf in seinen Bildern, in seinen Gesichtern. Hat ihm geholfen damals. Ich habe auch nicht so viel Geld gehabt, habe ich ihm abgekauft für 500 D-Mark, weiß ich noch genau. Hat immer über die nächsten Wochen dann geholfen. Paris was simply a literary dream, you know. And so I got there and I went to a hotel and then I just stayed in Paris. You know, it was the same thing. I set up, I started a little painting here and a little painting there. And then pretty soon my room was kind of covered with art. And, every, and, and what I loved about Paris, again, this would never happen in New York. Every day I would come back and they shut the curtain in my room. And I'd come at two o'clock in the afternoon and the curtains would be drawn. And I'd say, why am my room always, why are you always shutting the curtains in my room and the maid said oh because we don't want the soleil to get on your tableau <laughs> and, and you know we don't want this this to destroy the paintings you know the sun is not good for painting and i thought oh they're so great here you know this would never happen in new york they would take all your paintings and just throw them out the window These drawings were made at the Hotel Loti in Paris. All, and that was the place where I was living in that period of time. And it was, it was very sad by the time you reached the end of the 80s because my two best friends died, Keith Haring and John michel And so it was a kind of a tragic ending to the period of this moment in your youth. I didn't want those drawings to be dispersed separately into the world, so I 
put them all together on this one painting so that they would always remain together in this piece. And that was sort of the transition of something fresh and new from something sort of old. So it was a little bit like this rising from the ashes experience. I like to paint the way a sculptor thinks. I like the figures to feel like they could actually have a sort of there's a believability to the volume in the work and to the, in, the, in the faces and in the structure of the painting. So I was kind of thinking, I was starting to paint every painting as a sculpture. And then I thought, maybe I could just make sculptures. What we have here in this show are these gold heads that I did that were done in about 2001. I was working on them in my studio downtown Manhattan when the place blew up with 9-11, uh, you know? And so I was literally finding these faces in the clay while they were kind of finding people in the buildings. And it was this strange, again, tragic moment in, in uh, connection with art and life. <laughs> 